Good evening, Somers, and welcome to the Somers Town Board Work Session, Thursday, December 2nd, 2021. If you would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. And as has been our practice, we are, this is a hybrid meeting, meaning that uh, you can view this uh, on Zoom, um, on the government channel. And if you have comments, you can comment on Zoom, you can text us or actually call in during public comment. At which point I will make a motion to open public comment. In favor? Aye. 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 So moved. All right. Is there anyone here present uh, for public comment? Now, public comment, once again, is an opportunity for anybody in the Somers community to bring up an issue that is not currently on our agenda. When we get to your agenda item, if you have a comment, then that's that's when we'll entertain uh, comments. So if there's anyone here for public comment for anything that's not on the agenda. Yes, ma'am. Give us your name and address. Sure. My name is Barbara Tepper. I live at 714 Heritage Hills. I am speaking as the treasurer of the Board of Trustees for the Somers Library. But first, I want to thank you, Mr. Morrissey, and the town board members for all you do for the residents, and especially for what you did at the beginning of the pandemic in keeping us informed as to what was really going on. That was so great. Mm -hmm. Really appreciated that. And a thank you to Bob Kehoe and Carolyn Brush for all that they have done to help me as the treasurer of the library board to do my job. Now, I'm speaking because the library building is aging. As we all know, it is almost 40 years old and the mechanicals are showing their age. This past year, we had budgeted $8,500 for maintenance. Now, remember that number, $8,500. As of October, the end of October, we spent almost $20,000 on repairs to the building. Heating, air conditioning, septic tank repairs. This is more than double what we have budgeted, and we still have two months to go. We, the new board of the Somers Library, are also looking to the future. We desperately need to upgrade the electrical system, which was installed BC before computers. <laughs> and I invite you to come to the library at your convenience and we will give you a tour to show you how we have spaghetti wires taped down with duct tape to provide electricity for the computers in various parts of the building where we never used, where it was not designed to be. We also need to provide Wi-Fi outside the walls of the library. So if the schools need to shut down as they have this past year, students can have a reliable Wi-Fi connection. We need to provide better cell phone service. And I know the town is working on that. And we support you in whatever it, whatever comes to pass, but we definitely need better cell phone service. We need also to make the interior of the building ADA compliant. The aisles between the shelves are too narrow for even if somebody on a, with a walker to get down the aisle and if somebody else is coming up the aisle, they can't pass each other. They're just too close together. 
We also desperately need flexible programming space to accommodate groups of five or 10 or 20 or even 100 people. It's so, the, the, the need for programming space is so important and so desperate. Our children's librarian has used the staff lounge as a programming space, which is really not appropriate. And it's not fair to the staff that they can't go to the lounge to go have a, a coffee break because there's a program going on there. The previous library director applied for and was awarded a grant to purchase a generator for the building, which I think is wonderful. This will provide a valuable service to all the residents of Somers. We can't ignore climate change. Just this past November, there were seven tornadoes on Long Island. Never before have been, there have been tornadoes on Long Island in November. If we were struck with tornadoes up here, what would that do to our community? We would need a lot of spaces for people to go for shelter, for power, for electricity, for bathrooms, for food services. We would need that. We can't ignore that that may not happen, may never happen here. It can. And having a generator in the library would allow a couple of hundred more people to be able to utilize that our facility. Can our schools and our shelters currently support? Let's say if only 50% if of the people have their own generator here, and I doubt that 50% of the people do have their own generator. That would mean 10,000 people, even if 50%. Can our schools shelter 10,000 people in the event of a devastating weather occurrence. So I'm very happy that we have applied and were awarded a grant to get a, a generator so that the library now can become an additional shelter for the community. Several of our library board members, as well as our director, Ms. Daddio, attended a day-long session conference on Tuesday sponsored by Library Journal, a professional publication, on making libraries accommodate the needs of the 21st century. Wi-Fi, Zoom programming, redesign of the interiors to accommodate ADA compliance, the demand for flexible programming space, like I mentioned, we need space for groups of, let's say, 5, 10, 20, or 100 people. We need that space. And surveying the pop population as to what they foresee as the needs for the 21st century were some of the topics covered. And these are all topics that I have now mentioned. The new library board is looking to create connections with our state and federal elected officials to bring funding into this community for the library. So I see that you're asked that you are asking up, asking us to go into our reserve fund to balance our budget for 2021. I'm just asking you to please realize that this is not a sustainable practice. We need to upgrade the building to meet the needs of the 21st century for the benefit of all the residents of Somers. I wanna thank you for your time. And the Library Board of Trustees is looking forward to forging a productive relationship with you, the town board, so that we can best meet the needs 
needs of our Somers community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Barbara. You. Anyone else here for public comment? Call anybody on Zoom? Okay. Oh, Patty? Oh, the phone is dead. Okay, no text? No text. Okay. Okay, seeing, hearing, and having none reported, I'll make a motion to close public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. All right, our first uh, agenda item tonight, um, unfortunately, it's remained on our agenda for the last almost two years now, is uh, Somers COVID-19 update. Uh, in Westchester County, uh, there are currently 2,626 active COVID cases. And as of yesterday, there were 352 new cases. Uh, the county executive was um, at a press conference this week, and I think it was in response to the governor declaring an emergency um, basically for upstate where the uh, vaccination rates are lower. Um, th there's, you know, more um, cases. And the county executive was making the point that here in Westchester, our vaccination rates are very high. Um, there, I think he reported there's only 52 people in hospitals with, with COVID, being treated for COVID. Um, and for a county of a million people, that's, that's a pretty good number. Um, in Somers, uh, unfortunately, we've been seeing an uptick uh, for a number of months. We've been at single digits on new cases. Uh, we, as of yesterday, we had uh, 16 new cases. Um, and active in our community right now is 81 active cases. So clearly, you know, the, the, and with our vaccination rate here in Somers is close to 95%. So that's a remarkable achievement for the residents of the town. And, you know, I'm no scientist, but with that type of vaccination rate and these new cases coming, coming up, I'm thinking that they're, these are breakthrough, that people are vaccinated, but still get a mild case. And that, that 52 number that the county executive was talking about really speaks to that, that yeah, people are getting a reaction even with you know, uh, being boosted, um, maybe picking up uh, COVID, but then getting a mild reaction and, and surviving it with, with no after effects. So is it concerning? Yes. Um, you know, is this a result of families getting together for Thanksgiving, people coming from different places, possibly, um, college kids coming home and then going back, possibly. Um, but I, once again, I can't say enough about the town of Somers' response to this pandemic. Um, we here at the townhouse have uh, taken precautionary steps. Um, we're very protective of our employees, number one, and of the, of the community in general. And um, everyone has a responsibility, you know, to do what they feel is in their best interest, protect themselves. You see people going into stores. Some people don't have masks, some people do. Um, you have to respect the individual. Uh, but all told, um, the, this uptick in cases is not specific to Somers. Yorktown has, they're, they're in the hundreds of, of uh, active cases. Um, so once again, this, this is not a cause of alarm. We're not making any mandates. We're not declaring an emergency, um, but just be mindful that we're still in the midst of, um, of a pandemic. And hopefully we'll get this under control. Um, do I ever think COVID-19 is gonna go away? Probably not, it'll just be part of our environment, but we'll, we'll get our antibodies up and life will continue. 
you know, Rick, just to put it in perspective, what you're saying, I just look back. So two weeks ago, we met, there were three new cases on that day. And today there's 16. There were 41 active cases two weeks ago. And now there's 81 active cases. Low, but the trend is obviously not in the right direction. Right. Okay. So uh, moving on to uh, the next agenda item, uh, Billy Park project proposal uh, presentation. Um, this has been um, a very um, important and concerted effort by Parks and Recreation. Um, they came to the town board uh, earlier this year with a proposal to uh, upgrade and revamp uh, Bailey Park. Um, I remember the town board was kind of excited about it. Uh, we saw some drawings and I think we, at that point we recommended you know, we wanted you to go out to bid so we knew what kind of uh, uh, financial uh, commitment it was going to be. But in addition to that, what we did was referred it out to other departments, other um, people in our, our community for, for their input. So, um, you know, with that preamble, um, I see that the chairman of the Parks and Rec Board is here. Kevin, you want to... Come up and address us. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin Westerman. I am chair of the Parks and Recreation uh, uh, Board. It is a nine member board. It's the biggest board in town. And I'm happy that several of the members are here. We have uh, Jim Boniello, John Papalia, uh, Michelle uh, Sands, and Stephen Krug. Uh, it's a nine member board. This, the others are, are uh, participating on Zoom or uh, uh, online. Um, I've been on the board for about eight years and I'm one of the newer members. It's an experienced board. Uh, many of our own more than 20 years. All nine are different backgrounds, different, different uh, places in town, different places in their life, uh, different uh, occupations. All are longtime residents of Somers. I don't think there's anyone that's not a 20 year resident. We have three members on the board that are 50 year residents, more than 50 years. And I say that to um, show that we're, we have a good sense of, of, of how the town was because we lived through it. We have a good sense of how uh, the, uh, where we want the town to go because we've been working at this job for a period of time. Um, I don't think anyone could describe the board as reactionary. We're all, we're, we're thoughtful, careful, and, uh, and cautious about what we do. We've had uh, things suggested that we should spend money on. We, we talk about it and say, no, if it's not, we don't believe it's right. Um, each, each member was interviewed and appointed. And when appointed, they were tasked to advise and make recommendations on how to best manage and maintain the, the various parks in the town. And with that in mind, uh, in March of 2018, we uh, undertook to uh, try to look to up, improve Bailey Park. And we chose Bailey Park among the other nine parks because it's the smallest, it's the center of town. We thought that with just a, a smaller amount of money, we could really make a difference. Most importantly, Bailey Park was underused. And we, we, so we undertook to try to improve the look of the park and, and to make it more usable, to uh, make people enjoy it, to be a center of town, uh, a, a magnet as it's been described by board members. Um, and since March of, of 2018, we've discussed it at probably every meeting and every step of the way, we've kept the board apprised of what we're doing, what our plans are. We have, are very, very fortunate in that we had two excellent uh, liaisons, Richard Clinchy and, and Tom Garrity, who were interested and involved. Uh, since March of 2018, Tom has, has attended 14 board meetings. Since March of 2018, uh, Richard has attended a dozen board meetings. And during those board meetings, uh, we always discussed Bailey Park, sometimes at depth, sometimes cursory. Uh, at those board meetings that Tom and, and Richard were at, they, um, we saw presentations from landscape architects. And so um, 
so we were we were comfortable that the board has been kept apprised all along. It's always been discussed in detail in the uh, in the meeting minutes that the uh, that the town board gets. Um, and uh, I know I personally have spoken in in, in depth uh, in, in specifically with uh, Supervisor Morrissey about the board, and I've spoken about it generally to uh, to Councilman. Sirico. So um, this is all something that's been a slow process. Um, in November of 2018, uh, the town approved that we uh, pay a landscape architect to prepare a proposal. That was kind of an interim approval for the project. Let's we're going to uh, pay somebody to come and design a plan. So in order to do that, the town needed to uh, decide that yes, this is something worth pursuing. And so that's what happened. Uh, when this happened, we always knew that there would be people who were philosophically opposed to enhancements at Bailey Park. Always knew it. Uh, you, uh, today, in, the, in this day and age, you can't do anything without somebody objecting, complaining, sometimes reasonable, other times less so, but everyone believes their objections need to be heeded. Um, we spent three years going over proposals, changes, rejecting things. We went through several landscape architects, and in June, on June 10, I presented, I presented to the town board. And at that meeting, very specifically discussed the, the design, the square footage of the patio and the family areas, the path and the fencing that the project was going to include, uh, the plantings. We discussed that two trees were going to be removed, not because of the project, but because they were uh, deemed to be dead and, and, and a potential future danger by arborists. Mm -hmm. We discussed the cost. I, I kind of disagree with uh, Supervisor Morrissey's recollection because we said the, the bid was 100 and we, we was estimated at 142. There was a contingency, but we expected to get it cheaper. But so the, the purpose of the, of the uh, approval wasn't to get a better price. The purpose, purpose of, the, of the approval was to submit it to bid. Um, is that's what I thought I said. That at fine. that meeting, at that if meeting, we, we, we have approved, common ground, and that's great. Approved you to go to bid. Uh, yeah, it was approved to submit it to bid. Um, at that time, we also expressed the, the concerns. We were very clear about it. The concerns that it's the historic district that we're putting, uh, we're proposing to put pavers on grass. Uh, we talked about the parking concerns. And all that was done at the meeting. And the response to the meeting uh, was we were really surprised. And I, I watched it again in the last couple of days. And it, uh, the, the board was effusive about the, the, the project. There was, no, mm -hmm. there was no one that had any, any hesitation. And I, I have some quotes. And uh, Supervisor Morris, he said, quote, it's a great idea, close quote. Uh, Supervisor Morris said, it's, quote, going to look great. Mm -hmm. um, it was described as, quote, would be a welcoming venue for people to congregate. You, you recognize, you uh, described how in, uh, in Katona, how they have the gazebo and they have bands and people, their friends and families can come and, uh, and, and passersby stop and enjoy it. And you personally enjoy it. And you thought, wouldn't that be a great thing uh, to have there? So you were encouraging specifically uh, Steve uh, Ralston, the, the superintendent, but I know it wants to be here. Um, so you were coming up with ideas and how to use how to okay. use the park. Just what's the point? Well, the, the point is I'm, I'm setting, I'm framing where we are uh, because of the point, well, let me just, just finish here. Um, and, and the point will be made clear. I, I apologize if I'm carrying this on. Um, uh, Richard Clinchy was uh, just as effusive. He said, it makes it more town-like. It provides a better town service. It helps property values for sure. I think it helps sell houses and uh, it makes the town better. Um, Councilman Sirico said, I think it's a great concept. It's very timely. And, and uh, you may recall, you talked about how Yorktown has a gazebo. If people use it, it'd be great to use, use it here. Um, and you said, this is going to be a showcase. Uh, and Councilman Garrity called it a fantastic job and said, it's, it's, uh, it's more usable. Um, so in light of that, it was, was approved and uh, approved to go to bid. And uh, you did say that it should be referred to the Architectural Review Board. And in responsive to that, on June 24th, 2021, I attended the Architectural Review Board meeting and presented the, uh, presented the proposal. And I described 
uh, answered questions and discussed their concerns. And they were very specific about the concerns. They're all reasonable. And it was very really thoughtful. Um, they were concerned about drainage uh, because of the, the, the pavers there. We addressed it with the landscape uh, architect and they say there is no concern. It's being, it's being accounted for. The pavers have, uh, they're not being set in concrete. So it would go through and the way the plantings are and the way it's gonna be uh, mm -hmm. um, graded, it's gonna be fine. Uh, they thought it should be, there should be lighting. And the parks board said, it's really gonna be a dawn to dusk park. So we don't want to have lighting there, but it makes sense to wire it for lighting so that while we're, while we're working on it, so that in the future, if, if it changes, we're ready for it. It's cheap, efficient to, uh, to upgrade it. So in response to the architectural review board, we made that change. Um, they were concerned about the pathway width. We said it's absolutely gonna to be to code. And that was, that was fine. Um, they asked, asked for bathroom. We said, it's not gonna be the type of park where people are gonna have all day events. People are gonna be shopping, living, or working in the area. So that's, that's, that's fine. Um, and lastly, they said they're, they're concerned about the aesthetics and the materials used. And our response was, absolutely. We will show you, we will show you the bid before it goes out for your input. And with that, they were good. There was no, no further objections and I don't, unless the, the town received an objection that I'm unaware of. Um, so we're, we're ready to go, but there was a delay with the, with the landscape architect. And during that time, we started hearing that there was concerns. There was an article in the paper, the front page of the paper that described the project. And it was fairly done, but it made one critical mistake. It said that the, the, the park was gonna be paved instead of pavers. Mm -hmm. That's very different. And so what that did is that uh, generated some uh, letters to the editor. We, we expect people to be against it anyways, but that's fine. Um, and we got a complaint call. Call came to the town and it was referred to me. And I spoke to her on the phone, invited her to the meeting, and she attended the meeting. And a, and a really a lovely woman who uh, lives in the road right next to the park. And she said she doesn't want the noise there. And we assured her that uh, it's, it's not going to be for concerts. There, there will be concerts, but it's also dawn to dusk. And it's, uh, it's not something that should be a great concern. She didn't like it but she understood that we can't change a project for her personal whim. Um, that's the only call I'm aware of. I've asked for a log uh, or a list of, of people that have called, but that is the only call of complaint that has ever been communicated to us. Um, we heard there's written complaints and I did receive from the town uh, two things from two boards um, that were complaining about the project. And those boards are boards that I think we all expect to be against the project. It's the Open Space Committee and the Historical uh, Society. Um, the complaints weren't, there weren't any real cohesion to them. There were, there were just various things that were objected to. Certainly nothing was proposed. Why, why would you expect that there be opposition? Well, well because the, um, the Open Space Committee, their stated mission is, quote, to protect and preserve any largely unimproved parcel of land, whether publicly or privately owned. That's their mission to stop development of anything. Okay. Um, and the historical society? Historical society is, is uh, they're, they're, they're just, uh, I could be wrong. I wasn't surprised. If you were surprised, uh, then, then that's fine. Then, uh, then I'm, I'm wrong about that. Um, but those were the only two. But it, whether I expect it or not is, is only a side point. Okay. Um, I was at the uh, historic property meeting, which I'm sure you, you heard about on a Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, I know Kim attended. Um, and Emil, I was asking, trying to find what is what are your objections? Can't we have an accommodation? Can't we find out what your objections are so that we can maybe make some changes? The only objection that he would articulate was he hated the pathway. Hates the pathway, thinks it's stupid. Don't unneeded, unnecessary. But I'm looking in the in the uh, the letter for the Somers Historical Society. One of the complaints is that it has insufficient handicap and child friendly access. So even I don't know is there a, they don't want the pathway, but but there's concern about about handicap and and uh, child friendly access. Um, the building materials were deemed to be incompatible with existing structures, especially 19th century watering trough. 
Now, the two building materials in this project are, are a rose vinyl fence and concrete pavers. The, the structures on the uh, Bailey Park currently is a, a big concrete bandstand. It was renovated recently with concrete foundation, uh, concrete floor. It has these electrical outlets with the, this, the, uh, the outdoor thing. So it's all, it's all nice and lovely. It's not, it's not consistent with a historical uh, thing. It's, all, it's modern. So I don't understand how the, um, the organization that put in this concrete bandstand is objecting to a patio in front of it. Um, it, it can't be a historical property for purposes of us putting in a patio, but not for them putting in the, uh, in the bandstand. Um, it was specifically mentioned that it was inconsistent with a 19th century watering trough. Um, that, you know, for people that, that don't know, people that drive by, they, I'm sure they think it's a Jersey barrier. It's in uh, everything that's old isn't historic. It's, it's a big hunk of concrete that's cracked, that has rusted rebar, it has a uh, rusted uh, threaded pipe sticking out of it, and now it's being used as a flower pot. Uh, and so it's kind of walking the dog, having the, the, the tail uh, wag the dog to say, we can't put in, uh, we can't do an enhancement to the park because it's inconsistent with this hunk of concrete. Um, those, and that's what they're saying, it's inconsistent with this. Those are the, um, the main objection. Oh, they well, actually, they also, they said the uh, excessive square footage, uh, where, where, the, the, the excessive um, square footage of the paved materials. Now, I don't know what excessive means, it means too much, but I don't know what's, what's acceptable. But um, if they want smaller patios, we have never, we've demonstrated throughout this process that we're willing to listen and adapt mm -hmm. and adjust and accommodate to, because this is a town's park. It's not just in, in nine people. The nine people are representing the town. Um, but I don't also don't understand the objection to patios because the historical society approved and proposed to the Parks and Rec Department an 81 square foot patio to accompany a pitch, uh, to accompany a sign. It was a sign that was the Eagle Scout project, but they wanted it there to be an 81 square foot brick patio just for a sign. But they're objecting to a, a, a patio in front of the bandstand. It's just inconsistent. And it, it, there, I, there has to be another reason. Can you just tell me? Remind me, what is the square footage of that patio, just to make a comparison? Uh, 3,500 feet. And the, the, the Historical Society had a whole, whole list of things that uh, uh, they objected to that aren't part of the plan. I can go through them, but I, I don't think it's uh, needed. Um, the Open Space Committee letter of July 19, 2021. Um, again, their stated mission is to, is to preserve, to, not, to prevent development. Um, they were uh, objective about the mature trees. And again, we're stressing, we love the trees, but the, uh, there's two of them that are dead. They are going to, at some point in the future, be a risk to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the safety of people. They have to go. That's the only ones that are going. We don't want to, to take them out. Um, and the other thing is a garden with non-native and few pollinator friendly species of plants. I don't know. You know, I, I'm not sure what non-native. I think it, roses are from Central Asia, so I don't know. Does that mean they're no good? But we'll we'll work with people. If somebody would propose something instead of just criticize something, we would all be better off. If they say these are the type of plants that we think would be appropriate there, we would we would work with that. We've demonstrated from the beginning that we are willing to to make something that works. And but all we're getting, we're getting these the rocks are thrown, and, and, and you know, this is the culture to throw rocks and to criticize without trying to do anything helpful. Um, uh, they're concerned with uh, putting patio near the root zone. Yeah, we are too. That's why we're going to be careful, uh, careful about it. Um, so a lot of these things, there, there's an assumption that we are um, being casual about the things that are important to them. It's not, it's not the case. And we're all, we're listening to, um, to things and, and we're listening to our, to the experts. You know, I don't know anything about uh, plants and trees and, and root zones and root parameters. But we rely on the experts. Um, and he, here's, here's my point for all this. Since all five of you voted yes to allow this to go to bid, there has not been one single piece of information, not one idea, not one thought, nothing new 
that warrants changing your vote. Now we, we could we could go forward. There's just nothing happened. It's been on the front page of the paper. We've seen we've seen complaints. We've uh, we've read letters. We've uh, uh, gotten a phone call, but there's nothing that that the the board itself did not know at the time. We knew people were going to be against it. We discussed it at the meeting. We discussed it personally and privately. Uh, now we're here now because we could go forward. We have the approval to to set it to send it to bid, but what we don't want because we still need the approval to have the bid signed and approved. And we don't wanna waste the, the parks department's time and money in, in finalizing and preparing the bid and the other departments that we're, we're all we're gonna be working with. And just as importantly, the bidders that are gonna spend their time and money to, to respond to the bid. We don't wanna do it if the, if the board is committed to not going forward. And so that's why um, when it was suggested, we said, yes, it would be a good opportunity to discuss it. Um, in the Three and a half years of, of work of the nine experienced residents on the volunteer board. If it's to have any value, it's, it's, it needs to be listened to and not just, and not just ignored on, on because of some complaints that someone received. Uh, and I'm not saying that other people aren't complaining. I'm just saying we don't know about them. If they're doing it, they're doing it informally. And that can't be the reason for turning, for changing a vote when there's nothing else new. And if there is something else new, we should know about it. But we don't. We haven't been told. And uh, but so all it is is the people complaining about stuff that we all, we all we knew about. So to, to ignore the recommendations of the nine experienced members of the Parks Board and change your vote based on one complaining phone call Two letters from boards and uh, a couple of letters from the uh, couple of letters to the newspaper. It's um, it's 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 just it's stifling and chilling for what we've done in the past and what the board you expect the board to do in the future. It's a recipe for not getting anything done. You can't govern that way to 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 let a couple of complaints. Uh, change your opinion. And I, I, I respect that you you don't vote for things casually and you don't vote for things without knowing what you're voting for. And you don't vote for things without, without considering all of the things. And you all voted for it. And there's nothing to change your vote other than a couple of people. Maybe, the, maybe your friends are complaining about it. But that's as, as, as public leaders, as, as, as elected officials, that can't be a reason for changing your vote. And so um, we're going to ask that you uh, instead Give us a, a vote of confidence by reinforcing your vote, and so that will let us to go and work with the with the different boards to put together a bid and to improve the town. And I encourage you to look at the the June tenth meeting and your comments. When I looked at it again, it was it was eye opening. And when the board members looked at it again, two of them independently said, "Why are we here?" Because because there's it was so enthusiastic. It was so certain. Your only issue was. Uh, Councilman Morrissey, I'm sorry, Supervisor Morrissey, you wanted to know, can we get it done by September 11th? That was the issue. And to go from there to here, because a couple of people that we don't know about, they're unknown, unknown faces and names. I'm not saying they don't exist, but I've, they've never been communicated to us. To, but so to change your vote on that is just wrong. And so we, we, uh, we asked for, uh, we asked for, thank you. Okay. So. I just like to make a few comments and everything you presented tonight regarding that meeting was correct. We review this, it's an improvement to a park. Um, and I didn't make that comment. Can we, how fast can we get this done? 20 year anniversary of 9-11, it would be a, a uh, I knew it was a monumental task and probably would not happen. But once, we put this out once there was public knowledge that something of this magnitude was going to happen at, at that park is when we started getting feedback uh, in the community. Um, I personally, half a dozen people talked to me. Um, you know, how can the town be doing this? It's a, it's a pocket park. It's in the historic district. You know, why is it being made into a, a concert? And, you know, I, I was troubled and I was really amazed because here, you know, we have nothing but respect for our Parks and Recreation Board. You guys do a great job with Reese Park and, and our other parks. And it was enthusiastically received. 
And I was amazed at some of the feedback that we were getting from the community. Uh, in addition to that, um, when projects come up like this that are that involve a public spending public funds and uh, going to uh, affect a public property, we do like to refer it out to 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 other boards. You know, one thing I was really surprised about um, is this this park is in the historic district. It's a historic property, yet. No one outreached to the Historic Properties Board or the Historical Society during, during this phase of over the last three years, you said. You know, why, why they weren't involved in, well, no, let me finish. Um, so that, that was one thing um, that gave me pause. And, you know, <laughs> I'll be the first to admit, you know, I have personal feelings about things one way or another. But as an elected official, you know, I, I take public input. That's what this job is. So we do listen to the public. And, um, you know, you kind of say you don't, you don't have to listen to it. Well, yeah, as a town board, I think we do. We have to give everybody a fair hearing. And that is not to diminish. Once again, I'll repeat it. That's not to diminish any anything that you're board does you know we respect you to the nth degree but you know you have to allow for people's opinion to change based on outside input so, can, can, well, I, can i say one thing first sure. rick are you done or not yeah okay yeah and i can't say it any better than well, kevin, kevin i i'd like to hear from some okay. other folks here yeah. Yeah. um I can't say it better than, than Kevin did, but all the points that you brought up. And I have been at many of the meetings. You know, I am a believer right now that nobody uses the park. I see it rarely. I mean, I drive by all the time. I don't see people in there having lunch. I don't see people in there drinking coffee. When we have the events, which we, we do nice events there, people show up. Um, that said, we do listen to the public. And what I just heard was we have nine members of all different demographics of the, of the parks board who are all collectively together on this all think it's a good idea mm -hmm. and, and rick i mean you, you just said that you heard from a half a dozen people <clears throat> and that changed your mind there's nine people <laughs> who are saying that they're all for it mm -hmm. and i mean we all have people if we voted based on 20 people being against the project or 30, we will never pass any project moving forward, mm -hmm. ever. There will, no project will ever be passed. Okay, let me clarify what I, what I just said then about, I heard from people from the mm -hmm. public, but I also heard from our historical society, so our landmarks people yeah. and and uh, historic properties board. Well, I mean, this this park is not Kegel Park. It's not, it's, it's a not park historic. Park. It's a park in an historic district. It's not it's a, a historic park. Yeah, it's it a, is. It's no, it's a, no, Abraham Lincoln didn't okay. make a speech well, there. It's a historic property. It's in. This is a historic property. You know, it, it, and, but this is what gets me. Is the it, issue is Rick, you know what, we Rick, need you, input from these other boards that and that seem to be ignored. But but, but mm. we. I I agree with with uh, with uh, Chairman Westerman. I mean, I fully that's, expect that's that's your no, no. But what I'm saying is I fully expected the um, open space committee to be against it, because as long as I've been on this board for 14 I years, that. right. I've never been for. And I didn't mention anything. the open space committee comment. I well, you, did. you said the open space and and, uh, and the historical society. I also expected that. No, I said landmarks. The, but earlier you said uh, that the historic society, I expect you. You know, be against it as well, to be quite honest with you. I, I mean, I saw Meg when we were out there measuring stuff out, and, and her comment was, you don't like grass. No, I love grass. I, you know, I got a yard of it. Um, but I like I like a park to be used. I like a park to be used. And we're all, we're constantly saying how we need other spaces in this town to do things. And this is just a totally underused location. Um, yeah, but Tom, it's, it's, Rick, it's, under, I, Rick, it's say, underused. Well, no, but, but Rick, what I'm just going to say is what you said to, to Kevin is, can I speak my piece and then come back? Um, 
because we're obviously we disagree on it. When I ask people, what do you think about Bailey Park? The first reaction is, I don't even know where Bailey Park is. I've never heard of it. Where is it? I say, it's parked in front of the townhouse. Oh, is that what it's called? With the gazebo? I said, yeah, that's Bailey Park. So most people don't even know where it is. Uh, or not most, but a lot of people, uh, especially maybe some of the newer people. Um, I just think that, the, that these nine people with all different walks of life worked for three years on this. Um, and I do want to hear about reaching out to people. Uh, and what's going to happen is, is if this gets voted down, it's going to be the same park you see now. Now, you guys might be very happy with that. And, and the historical society will be beyond overjoyed. And the open space committee will be uh, will be exactly happy with it. And nothing will happen in the park. There is a beautiful Boy Scout, um, uh, uh, Eagle Scout project. I wish we could track how many people actually have seen it. Because I would bet you most people haven't seen it. We were there the day that they put it in. But, you know, it, it's not it's not a go to destination. It's, it's not. Um, it, it's there. And, and you know what you know what it is it, for now. It's, it's Grace puts together fantastic um, events. events there. And, and I, I, I went I've gone to them. Um, but other than that, it's the signpost where people put signs up so they can announce what their meetings are going to or what, what what's coming up in the town on the two posts at the Heritage Hills donated years ago. That's my opinion. We disagree. But but that's my opinion. And I just don't see change, uh, changing something based on uh, on uh, what I consider to be a, a vast minority of uh, of, uh, of citizens. So well, let me, me, if I may, yeah. let me just say this. I would like to hear, obviously, there are people here who have been here, and I would like to hear those reasons and those opinions. I did not actually know we were here to decide whether or not to overturn that vote. To tell you the truth, it says discussion. I assume that's what we're going to do. So I'd like to hear that. But let me just say this is that when we're talking about different boards on town, I, it, I didn't have any expectation. I don't have any preconceived notion of anybody for or against. I have the notion that all those boards have people that I respect who may come with different viewpoints on things, but I don't know what those viewpoints are gonna be until I hear them. And so, you know, I try to honor those, uh, to hear those in an attempt to, as we said, if we can make it better. So that that's my impression of when people comment on things, just like you, you're a trial lawyer, you go in, you hear witnesses testify because they, they see things from different perspectives. Uh, when I was president of the school board, you'd hear people uh, about the school bond that we passed, having different perspectives, always looking to improve something and you appreciate their point of view. So that that's how I come at it from. Um, and not adversarial, but just we are looking to make the best proposal we can. There may be some point, as, as Tom was saying, that people's, the possibilities diverge. So it's not an accommodation, but I don't know about that, you know, until I hear. So that, so I just like to hear from more people. That's my point of view on it right now. It's not a trial counselor, but you can rebut. <laughs> yes, if you, <laughs> we can have a redirect, a recross if we like. So, um, uh, Supervisor Morris, he suggest, was suggested. I don't know why the uh, historical property board wasn't informed. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand how you could say that. I serve on the historical property board with you, and that's where we've we've discussed it. We at the June twenty uh, meeting, we discussed Emil uh, going at me with both barrels. Uh, because I because he was against the things that we were discussing. We haven't. There was no suggestion that we're not uh, communicating with people. If we are, okay. uh, it's not knowing the process. And uh, we had a we had a uh, an issue a couple months ago with the basketball hoops, and the outcry and raising that to a crescendo was ridiculous. And but there, but there were so many more people that were so viscerally annoyed and angry, and, and the, the volumes of people and Facebook and and uh, and letters and calls, and uh, the difference with that, and the, the board was great. They they recognized for what it was, even though there was a lot of people complaining. Right. But the board recognized what it was and supported the parks board on that. And see here, this you know a handful of people and and a, a couple of boards. 
The only difference is, that, is are the type of people that are complaining now, and that's that's the, the issue I have. If if uh, it, it's not it's not complaints. It's been six months since, since we've had our proposal. It's been six months since it's been in the front page of the paper. We've listened to all the uh, to the architectural review board. We've we've received the objections from uh, from the other boards. So there's there isn't anything new to to address, um, and so I, I, there certainly is nothing new that would that warrants a change of the vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm sure we have others. I'm guessing. I'm hoping. Yeah, I mean, yes. Grace, you're here, and I see you. Yeah, would you like to? Yeah, ready to speak. Would like to come up. Yeah. Well, we want to hear. We yes, want to this hear. This is an agenda people. item. Okay. Valley Park discussion presentation. And, it, discussion. and in my opinion, it is not an adversarial thing. We're oh, simply good. looking to discuss. I know. Okay. And, We're talking um, about good things here. You know. I just mm -hmm. want to make. Um, some clarification of things that Mr. Western said. First of all, the uh, I'm Grace Zimmerman, and I am um, Vice President of Summers Historical Society, but I'm also a member of the Society's Landmarks Committee. And the Society's Landmarks Committee has a duty to offer opinions on development within the Business Historic District. And there are three of us here this evening, myself and two other members, Elsie Gio and Margaret Timon. That's a function of the Historical Society, a subcommittee of the Historical Society. The Historic Properties Board, of which you are a member and a liaison, is a different board. There is one member for the Historical Society. There is also the town historian. There is an architect, yourself, and Parks and Rec. So the Historic Properties Board, what I mean to say, is not the Historical Society. That being said, so Emil Antonazio, who you mentioned before, is the chairman of the Historic Properties Board because that's the way the board is laid out. And he is also the president of the Historical Society. But when he's speaking, he's a member of that board. This board, the Landmarks Committee rather, is something different. So in July, usually the process goes when there's a development in the town, in the um, business historic district, we get a memo, either from the planning office or from uh, someone, or the, in this case, it was from the town board saying, we are reviewing this application. It's in the business district, the business historic preservation district. Would you comment? And I would assume I can't speak for the Open Space Committee, but having served for about 10 years on the Conservation Board myself, you make a reply, and your reply is not necessarily specifically how you would change whatever it is you're suggesting. It's merely a suggestion. So in that case, in July, we sent a memo to the Somerstown Board, and we copied the Architecture Review Board, the Planning Board, and the town planner. That seemed to be the proper protocol that we were used to. Now, for the sake of the evening, I don't know that you want me to read the memo. Um, I have copies for everyone. I had a PowerPoint with the, some of the highlights of it prepared and I will leave it for Paul. Maybe he can put it on the website. Um, but what we said in our comment was, in our view, this proposal negatively impacts the historic 19th century rural community character lauded by architectural historians in the Somers Hamlets designation as a national register district and is contrary to objectives set forth by the town in its creation of the Business Historic Preservation District in 1978. Then we go on to cite some of our specific concerns, which remain the same because at the end of this two page memo, we do say, keep us informed of the status of the application so we may continue reviewing comment. So the comments that we make are suggestions. We're not experts, we're not landscape architects, we're not architects. We are merely offering our suggestions and our observations. And I would assume that's exactly what the open space committee has done as well. So I will read these because some were misquoted. Our specific concerns for this proposal are excessive square footage of paved materials in the community area and three family gathering areas greatly decreases open green space, a defining feature of a rural 19th century town square or park. 
This would negatively impact the historic character of Bailey Park, as well as the Somers Hamlet. Do we know what excessive square footage is? Only what we saw in the plan seemed excessive. The use of building materials are unsuitable for retaining historic character and incompatible with existing structures in the park, especially the 19th century watering trough. Yes, you're correct, it is concrete, but it is from the 19th century and it was moved by a group of citizens from another location to there, to the location it's in now. Limited accessibility with insufficient parking, handicap and child-friendly access or crosswalks, particularly given the proposed occupancy associated with the seating areas. We're just making these observations. Again, dismantling and relocation of existing dedicated memorial benches and unity garden plaque. We feel this garden should remain intact as dedicated. There is on the plan, we saw no rationale for tree removal. This is just the plan we saw. We just saw a site plan. The plan omits identification for park features, the Unity Garden bronze marker, the 19th century watering trough, and its bronze ID marker, the Bailey Park bronze marker, the proposed historical scout, I'm sorry, the proposed Eagle Scout historical sign. So in essence, these were observations we had. We are not adversarial. And I personally, and I will speak for the society, take offense at you saying, that that is exactly what you would expect from us because we understand everything can't be saved. And we also know that everything shouldn't be saved. We're all about compromise, not about being adversarial. Our memo goes on to say, to give you historical context for this point of view, I won't read it again, it's very lengthy, but in short, the Hamlet, is 56, the Somers Hamlet is a 56 acre area that has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places. That means that the federal government and the state government have deemed our Somers Hamlet to be historically significant in the history of the United States. You know, excuse me while I'm looking for my PowerPoint that had this data on it. <laughs> In the narrative for that nomination, which by the way, was spearheaded by the late town historian, Mickey Oliver, and that designation and the work that was done for it was paid for by the town. In that designation, the architectural historian states, the old hamlet continues to hold together in the midst of unceasing intensifying development in the region. The physical characteristics of the historic Hamlet have been largely preserved. And in the context of this late 20th century transformation of the surrounding cultural environment. Most importantly, he says, the Somers Hamlet district, historic district, emerges as a rare surviving example of a 19th century rural community in the New York metropolitan region. Neil Larson, I have a map of the district here to protect the hamlet from development pressures and to retain its historic rural character, the Somers Town Board designated a business historic preservation district in the hamlet in 1978. And they revised it two more times. There's an entire section in the town code that deals with specifics on the hamlet and how you can develop there because there are some things that you can and can't do in the business historic preservation district that you can't do, that you can do in other parts of town. So in the town code, when they created the business historic preservation district, you say it is the purpose of the BHP to maintain the historic development patterns of the Summers Hamlet, including the size and spacing of structures and open spaces to encourage the protection and enhancement of the features of the Summers Hamlets that have a special historical, architectural, cultural, aesthetic, or other similar special interest or value, as well as to allow the reasonable use of land and buildings as appropriate to strengthen the historic function of the Somers Hamlet as the community and government center of the town. 
that's in our code. The future of the Somers Hamlet is also addressed in the Somers Master Plan 2016. One reference is on page 66. The future of the Somers Hamlet continues to depend on a balance of preservation of historic features and character and appropriate levels of development and redevelopment within the context of available infrastructure. And in fact, on the map in the master plan, excuse me, I have to look a little closer with my glasses. It says, maintain character of historic Hamlet, of maintain character of historic Hamlet core as area anchor. And they point, the arrow points to Bailey Park and the Elephant Hotel. As far as the patio that you're referencing for Eagle Scout Robert Moore's project, there was never any talk of any kind of patio for his sign. In fact, I was one of the co-sponsors of that project with the town historian. And in fact, we were not aware of any kind of improvements planned for the park until the evening of his presentation to your board. We had not been advised of that, but there was never any plan for a patio. In fact, we said, we will work with you in whatever way you want. So when he creates the sign, it can be moved. That was a stipulation that he got in his Eagle Scout nomination. So su suggest otherwise is incorrect. I don't think I have anything more to say. Do you have any questions about the um, response from the Somers Historical Society Landmarks Committee? Because I'm wearing two other hats tonight. Unfortunately, the town historian is not well. Oh, no. um, she doesn't have COVID. Oh. <laughs> um, but I have a reply for her. She would like me to share with you. I can either give it to Patty or read it. Up to you. Read it into the record. All right, it's short. It's. Um, in my view, the proposed Bailey Park redesign has not taken into consideration the historical significance of the park's locale in the Somers Hamlet National Register District and the Business Historic Preservation District. I agree with the memo from the Somers Historical Society Landmarks Committee, see attached, I have it here. In quoting the application for National Register status, spearheaded by my predecessor, the late Nikki Oliver and overseen by this office, Neil Larson and Associates states, the effects of the resulting residential growth has squeezed the hamlet against a busy highway, and it has heightened its significance as a rare surviving element of the Westchester County's 19th century rural heritage. I believe any redesign should be reflective of that heritage. And if I could clarify something going back to the Landmarks Committee's responses. We're not opposed to the design. We said we are opposed to the design that we saw. So we are open to discussion and sitting down and talking with you to say, make some suggestions. Again, we're not in the building tray, so we couldn't tell you what kind of materials should be used. We couldn't tell you what the appropriate square footage would be based on some kind of engineering calculation. But we are more than willing to sit down with any board to work out, to come up with some kind of collaborative agreement that everybody would be happy with. So this is the question I was going to ask you, yes. Grace, because I, when I listened to you very as intently as I could before, I was trying to discern, is there any reason I did not hear any at any time saying the project is unacceptable, just that you had some concerns that, as I see it, that's correct. Could be, you know, uh, whether you want to say tinkered with or, uh, you know, uh, exactly in some way. It, it, did I hear that correctly is what I'm asking you. Yes, you heard that correctly. Thank That's you. correct. Right. Um, the last the last comment I have is from Nancy Gerbino, who also couldn't be here this evening. I can read it into the record if you'd like. Please, sir. Um, Ray Town Board, agenda number two. Daily Park project proposal presentation. The drawing for the proposed changes is well done and attractive. 
My criticism which follows is not about this professional piece of work, but rather it is in the form of two simple questions. Why would you destroy a 199 year old beautiful village green? This lovely proposal does just that. It does not in any way equal the quiet beauty and serenity that our Bailey Park has been providing us all these 199 years. It is the lawn, the green, that makes it special under the trees with the classic pavilion. If the town board approves the parks department's proposed changes, it would be a ludicrous decision in addition to being money down the drain. It's here that I have heard music, eaten lunch with friends while watching the traffic go by, as well as listening to passing politicians over the years announce their plans for summers. No, this proposal is not needed, not even in a small way. Why do you want to fix something that's not broken? Regards, Nancy. Now that's Nancy, that's not me, that's Nancy. But um, as I said, exactly, we're willing to speak to you and work with you and offer suggestions. And that's what the Landmarks Committee does. We're advisory, we're not adversarial. We're all in this town together. Mm -hmm. We all live here, we all want the best for everything. Thank you for your compliments on the concerts this past summer. Um, I'll speak for a moment, if I may, to myself. For some clarification on the park. The park is in the National Register District. There are 56 properties. I'm not sorry. There are 56 acres in the Somers Hamlet Register District. Bailey Park, and each parcel was scrutinized for its significance historically. So when they assessed the 56 acres, the state government and the federal government said, are there enough to make this worthy of a national register district? And they decided yes. So Bailey Park is listed as one of 46 contributing properties to the US Department of Interior's designation of the 56 acre Somers Hamlet. That being said, when there's a geographic area like that, that's asked to be on, or somebody has approached the national, um, approached SHPO or has approached, approached the federal government for designation, you send a letter to all of the properties asking, would you like to be part of this or not? So you have an option as a property owner to say, no, I don't wish to be part of this consideration. You could have a historic property, but you don't want to be part of that designation. And that was the case in this, in this instance, there were several properties that are in roughly in that 56 acre parcel who chose not to be part of that application. The town of Somers, however, wanted to be. So the Elephant Hotel and Bailey Park and the old Butt House, those parcels are all counted in the as contributing properties because the town, which obviously, I think obviously would have said yes, because they're the ones that initiated the application to begin with, but they said, yes, we wanna be part of that district. So, so in answer to, is it a historic park? Yes, it is. And the town has through the years lobbied and advocated for it as such. And so what we're just saying, I think in all of these, we'd be happy to work with you, make some suggestions, maybe do some research if we've been asked to say how we might mediate something that we feel would be helpful to the town, helpful to the citizens, but still be mm -hmm. reflective of the historic heritage and the legacy in this area. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Grace. Thank you for Thank your time. You. Well said. Very well said. Anybody else? Can I just ask, is there a lot of, you would have told us. You're going to have, you're gonna have to come to the microphone if you do it. Yeah. But Arnie beat you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Arnie Gio. I live at 1 Somerset Drive, and I was one of the people that moved the water in trough. Uh, I want to make it, uh, okay, I spoke to Steve. I have the freedom to speak for him at the same time that Steve Delzio. 
approximately eight to nine years ago, he came to the board and asked permission to move the water and trough at the previous location west of here on 202. His concerns was that was totally overgrown. He saw it uh, de de deteriorating when he was on a wee little kid on a school bus. It was his dream to preserve this. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> now, the town board approved of the move. Approximately eight years ago, I was one of the many members of the community that participated in moving this water trough. Now, in talking to some of the elders of this town, it does have a history to this town. It is the replacement of the original water trough that's very similar to the watering trough north of here on 116 and 202, made out of stone and cement. Now, again, talking to the elders, the trough that is in Bailey Park at this moment was moved. From, okay, the original trough was very similar to the trough at 116. And the reason why it was moved back at the turn of the century, when New York City granted money to improve the roads around New York City reservoirs. And that was one of the main troughs for the cattle and the horses to go from Boston to Peekskill. Now it was brought up why I'm here, that there was <coughs> pipe sticking out and rebar. Well, the so-called rebar is threaded rods. I would really love to know what those threaded rods, rods were for. They had to be for something. Now the pipes, where the location was, there was a spring up the hill used to feed that trough and there was an outlet. And the reason why these troughs are further away than in the middle of the town was when you had cattle, when they drink, what else do they do? So you can have the smell and the stink in the hamlet of the town. I'm here only to talk about the trough and to let everybody know the location, the current location now was picked by the superintendent of parks. So that is a very important part of the, uh, of the trough. But it had nothing to do with where Steve wanted to put it. It had nothing to do where Steve wanted to move it. Yes, he did, but everything got approved by the proper authorities. And that's why I'm here to talk about that and that only. And I want to thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thank you, Arnie. Okay. You know, as this as, as this project morphs into and goes forward, you know, that's an interesting story, Arnie. And I remember when you did that and learning about it, because I had no idea what the thing was, that would be something maybe there's some way when people go by, like, what the heck is that thing? You know, at least being, you know, a history teacher, I like to read about that stuff. That might be something going forward that's there, unless it's there and I've already missed it. <laughs> you're on a deal, you do whatever you want this town. <laughs> now it was, you know, it was brought up uh, about the care of the trough. I, I realized there are times where it, it, there is no plantation in it. But I do know the majority of the time, Steve from the Mexican Shack takes a great deal of time and pleasure in decorating, decorating the trough. I will say that. And if all possible, some lighting on it, or if not hardwired for the future. So this way, everybody can enjoy the trough, even in the early evenings. So I'd appreciate that. Thank, Thank you, Jeremy. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know how many people are aware of this, a but there is a plaque there. 
and it gives the it's uh, on the inside. It's on the it's inside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my fault. Sorry. So, you know, I'll it's uh, you know, it's a very nice plaque, and there is a time capsule there. It still has to be filled, but there's a time capsule there. <laughs> but anyway, I wish I could answer more questions. I did not come prepared for this. I was well, watching yeah, it. Right. We're, it's, we're, really, we're really here to discuss uh, yeah. Bailey Park and yeah. All right, Parks but and I Rex just want to say about land. the trough. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. We had uh, another comment. Stephen Krug, 20-year uh, resident of Somers, 47 Fieldstone Drive, a member of the Parks and Recs Board. Uh, Grace, I appreciate all your comments. I've never met, we've never met, and uh, I, I appreciate all the, the, the comments and the perspective you bring to the table. Uh, I would just like to, to say that, uh, Supervisor Morrissey, do you have a log of the uh, specific uh, objections to the proposal that's, that you've already approved for us to get this bid on? Is there a log? I mean, do, do we have, do we know the number of, you've brought up anecdotal conversations you've had. I can tell you the nine board members have all had dozens of anecdotal conversations that there's uh, underwhelming support for, for, the, for the project that we've, that we've put forth. So I, we're, we're talking about anecdotal conversations that you've had. I'd like to know, is there a log? Do you, do we, do you keep a log of your conversations? No, but people? then, but then our, but, but I, I believe the nine people on our board that have had anecdotal conversations would outnumber the anecdotal conversations you've had. And now we're going to get in the contest back and forth of who'd had more anecdotal conversations. Okay. Now so, you're going on the adversarial side here. No, I'm not, just, I'm not being adversarial at all. Uh, we I'm, I'm asking, I'm, I'm not being, I'm let asking. Me ask your, let me ask, answer your question. No, I do okay. not have a log of uh, conversations that I have with people that I meet on the street or, you know, voice, call me and voice an opinion. But what we did here tonight is our Historical Society and Landmarks Committee, they were bored as well, you know, should they? Should we not listen to them? No, and I, I appreciate the comment. I, in fact, I, I I learned a lot, and I appreciated, and it opened my mind to to a different perspective. Okay. It truly did. My question is for us to take into account if there were to be changes made. What are those changes? Are, are yeah. they? Have they been logged? Have they been from what your conversations have been? What have those objections been? No, yeah, so we can basically address leave the park alone is basically the. You know the the input that, that 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 I got, but I've also got input from other boards about it. So I, I, it begs the question at this point, and you know, Kevin, I'll I'll direct this to you. Is the current design something you're locked into? Um, do you want the board to take a a vote on this tonight? Do you want us to table this while? You get more input from uh, landmarks and the historical society. Yeah, come on. Up. No, I, I, I've been clear tonight that uh, we we're going to uh, give the proposed bid to the architectural review board. Uh, we we, I, we are not locked into anything. We uh, this the nine members of the board came up with what we thought was the best design mm -hmm. after, but that does, does that mean it's the only design or the, the most perfect design? It's the best design that we came up with. What we don't want to do is, and we're, we're certainly talk to people and, and take input from everyone we have throughout the process. And it's not, it's not our fiefdom that we're worrying about do, doing, doing it our way. And excuse me, and I think um, Councilman Clinchy and Councilman Garrity know that the way the board is run. So, but what we don't want to do is we don't want to be beholden to anyone with a with a uh, a gripe or or an objection. If there's, it, it, we will work with people, but we need to know what what the process is. It can't just be anyone that 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 pipes up, sends us back to the drawing board again. No, I think what you heard here was another another board with who's got responsibility of the historic district, and I, I learned things tonight myself about the designation and the, the state designation and the federal designation of the historic district. Kevin, the you wanna change a shingle on a building in the historic district that needs architectural review board approval. You know, I'm wondering, <laughs> were we in violation because we re rehab the gazebo? Should we have gone to SHPO and 
and and gotten any kind of regu if, regulatory if it authority? If was an, a, a historic property, then you are. But but it's not. It's it's a piece of land in an historic district. Uh, I I, I, know, I I hear I hear your position, but I just don't share that position. Um, well. All right. I don't know if that distinction is necessary to this discussion, though. Right. Fine. You know, so I, I think we heard from Chairman Westerman and I'm assuming from others on the board that they would work with another board to look at the plan. And so I would suggest that we do table it and that we move forward and, and have some more input put into the plan. I appreciate all the work you guys have done. Like I said, I've been there for many of the meetings and I know how seriously you take it as you do everything. I know, you know, we, we have a a fantastic builder who who helped you know design the plans and all in in um you know and the member of the board jimmy boniello so uh and everybody else who vetted it so my suggestion would be just that is to let's uh regroup and then after the holidays you know, everybody have a nice holiday and then get together and then we could uh we could figure out where we want to go moving forward about what changes might need to be made i mean that approach just seems sure. to make common sense from what i've heard do I see any reason to not proceed with the project? No. And as you, someone was mentioning, it was, I know there was one person who said, what about the cost? Well, the costs are up much higher, if you remember. It's like 200 something. And even at one of the board members, I go, how much to remove a trait? And, and the board made it clear, you know, this is just a working number. And, you, and it came down about 60,000 or something like that. And I'm still, still a work in prod in, in process. But, you know, I think it's a good thing. I remember 10 years ago, maybe more talking this with Mr. Boniello, talking about a vision in the middle of town that he and I sort of shared that improves the town. And I think working with the historic properties board to say, let's keep the historic nature. I love basketball it's, courts and baseball it's, fields. It's the landmarks. Excuse me. I get it's it wrong. Landmark, yeah. Landmarks. Okay, right. different. I just but we're not going to put, we're not going to put a lit basketball court in the middle of the town no, i don't think, I think it as much as i love basketball and to your point um the other thing point but i want to keep the historic nature of it right, and that's right. where you can help well, things that i don't know and none well, of us and my, that's my and that's my point because my point is the town it's not just our opinion it is our opinion however <laughs> it's our opinion but our opinion we share the opinion with the town in general because the things i've cited are things that the town government have has implemented the business historic preservation district there are codes in there pertaining specifically to the hamlet mm -hmm. the master plan again you address those same concerns so we share the same concerns that the town government has already articulated in those documents the master plan and in the business historic preservation district and i just might add that um, since we're speaking to Mr. Boniello, the across the street, the um, Bailey Court. Bailey Court is also not the whole development, but the home there was a contributing uh, feature to that application. So um, that being said, I just wanted to understand the process because um, I think part of this problem we have or this disagreement we have issue. is me because we didn't under know um, the process. So what we are under the what we thought is was to happen, the landmarks committee and and is that when there is any kind of activity in the business historic preservation district, we are notified of it by some agency when that begins. So we have opined on a number of things in the project. Uh, in the district. This is the most recent. We did mm -hmm. opine on the um, building right behind us, the 7-Eleven project, um, because that came to our board and we gave an opinion about what we thought would be um, something we could do. So it's not like we're picking on any board. We're doing our due diligence, but that was the process. It came from, I guess that application came from the planning are you the lead agency for that or is it planning board? I don't recall who was. For which one? Um, the 7-Eleven project. Yeah, that's a zoning amendment. That, that would be the town board. Okay. So anyway, so it came to us for comments and that's what we did, comment. And so now it goes back and whoever assembles those comments then moves forward. And that's where I think this process has kind of been flawed because 
you were you were working on this parks plan, but initially, but you never it never came to us. And I'm not saying it's anybody's fault. It's just that it never came to us or it never came to open space because as any town planner will tell you, it's and they've changed the laws in the last few years where the applicant will come in and sit down with the planner and say, listen, before I formally put in an application, what do you think about? I want to try this. Mm -hmm. I want to do that. Blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of mediation going on and there was no mediation here. And I think that's the problem. And I think this evening, I'm sorry to be so lengthy tonight, but I think this is a mediation session of sorts. Yeah. Um, so I just wondered where it goes from okay, here. So I think I can sum it up. Okay. I think we heard from chairman of the Parks and Rec Board, um, Kevin Westerman, that they are willing to seek landmarks input into the design. Um, and that's that's the question I asked. You know, is this the design you want to go forward with and have the board vote on? Um, or based on tonight's discussion, you know, and what I think it, what I did here was that Parks and Rec, nine member board is willing to, to work with the landmarks regarding some renovation or project at Bailey Park. And I would say if the Open Space Committee has rendered an opinion, they should be included at the table as well. Yeah, but well, look, we're, we're, we're a town of volunteers and boards and everyone's interested party, especially in the historic district. So um, with that, uh, Kevin, I uh, once again, appreciate your, your time, your effort, your enthusiasm um, and, and your board as well. Uh, are you, uh, <laughs> we are known for our park system here. And I think you all do a great job uh, doing that. Um, if this is a little hiccup in the in your your service, uh, you know, to the town, then you know, let's let's work it out. And I think we do have a a path we can go down. But if you came thinking that there was going to be reversal, I mean, there's no reason to think that, in my opinion. We were told that. Okay. Well, that I wasn't told that. So okay. <laughs> no, we we were. <laughs> We were okay. told that. Okay, I just see you know keep the historic nature of it. Go forward with the project. We'll see. And see, see what things, happens. Things yeah. can change. What you were told didn't come to fruition. We came here with the hope of and the intent of trying to change it. Okay. So, okay. Good. Thank you. All thanks, right. Kevin. Okay, great. great. Thanks, everybody. Hey, thanks. The board. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, interesting Thank discussion. Very interesting. I'm going to reduce I learned stuff. The next one. Well, we always we always learn a little see, something. Uh, yeah. Holes. Good part of the job. I want us uh, to continue down the, the line. We'll skip over number three. It's up to you. You want to take a minute so everybody can really think everybody's leaving? Nah, I, I think we should go. Oh, you know what? Why don't you recuse yourself? I can read into the record. I recuse myself from uh, agenda item number three. Okay. So <laughs> item number three is the double utility pole legislation discussion. Uh, we should really drop the legislation piece of that on future agendas. Because as we've uh, been informed from our uh, town attorney, uh, we don't have any kind of uh, legal authority to uh, take any uh, action, regulatory action in the uh, right of way or the um, where the utility poles are. But I've read some of the correspondence that has come our way by by you. Do, do, you, do you see like progress in that? I read some of these things, you know, and they're kind of lengthy. It's just like, come on, guys, get it together. We don't need two poles in every poll. Okay. Are, so are we making progress there, in your opinion? Or yeah. What? Yeah. No, we are. Um, it seems if, like it. If nothing else, uh, let me read into the record the uh, our latest. So we had a meeting, um, Councilman Sirico, myself, and um, our representative from uh, NYSEG, Dylan Mayashi. He organized this meeting and he uh, kind of summarized it for us uh, at the end of the day. He said, NYSEG has been working with the town of Somers to address the issue of having double poles within the town by helping the town navigate the NINJ system, N-J-U-N-S system. We have, been, we have been meeting to update the town on the status of NYSEG's role in the process. For the next meeting, we would like to include representatives from Altice and Verizon 
that can provide an update on the status of the NJUNS tickets for the town. Nin ninjas? Engines. Ninjas. Sounds like engine, but it is engines. We would be looking to have the next meeting, um, blah, 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 blah. If you can please send me an availability, the week's greatly appreciated if there's another contact within your organization. So to answer your question, Richard, to get Verizon and Altice in a meeting together, I think is, mon <laughs> is monumental to start with. You saw what it took to get um, John Belligan here. But you know what, what we've learned is you know, we were told there's 500 double poles now in, in town. Really? Uh, because when they put I in new poles, every time it, it, it escalates. Yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. you know, we, I'll tell you, there's a willingness on the part of NYSEG to, to really, you know, they suggested this this next meeting. Good. So, um, good. And I think, uh, you know, we will make some head, headway. That's it great. started with a legislative, some, some legislative changes, right? That we thought that we thought we, we could, could do, you know, sort of created a little bit of a cudge in our okay. club, right? Okay. But that really didn't play out. But they came to the table and they're working with us. So That's we, good. We'd rather work with them. Yeah. They put together a database of all the outstanding polls That's and good. where they stand in the process of who has to do what next. So that's you know that's a pretty big accomplishment. Now the question is is can we get them to move it forward? Yeah, and I, I'm hopeful that they will. It just you know it's just pushing uh, a lot of sunlight on this process and raising uh, its importance to us in our town. Mm -hmm. And you know, nice has been pretty constructive. I mean, we went through that process you know three or five years ago. Yeah, I remember well. And uh, you know, I, I don't think they want to. They want to work. They want to work constructively. As a, it seemed, you know, they had a new CEO and certainly it was a new attitude. The first time we met with them in this room it was like, it was just defense, 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 defense. Like, well, what do we hear? You're saying you can't do any better, but things did graduate change. And, and mm -hmm. I don't know the CEO, but they do credit him with uh, trying to be more uh, friendly with the towns and, and, and instead of defending policy, make things better. And that's what all of our job is to make things better as we can incrementally. Right. So no, yeah, I, have, I have congratulate to... you on your efforts. I have... So, I mean, essentially we started a project that they're essentially looking at this and then a project manages. So we'll be able to measure it. If 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 it doesn't succeed or it's, it's not as fast as we like it to be, we're gonna know it. We're gonna know where and why. Uh, and, so uh, yeah, we now have access to this program, which lists yeah, nice, all nice. the polls and whatever. And, um, Interesting enough, uh, one of Altis field person um, responded to this email by saying, you know, because maybe he saw that John Delegan was copied on it, but he said, we're going to send out a field crew tomorrow to take a look at what, what our situation is there. So, um, you know, look, we're getting we're getting some movement on it. Yeah, great. OK, so that's our that's our update. Uh, angle fly condominium demolition discussion. Oh boy. Yeah. So those condos down there, we inherited when uh, we, we purchased uh, this 654 acres known as the angle fly preserve. Uh, these are condos, I think, built in the 80s. 78, yes. I think. It is in the late 70s. 78, 78 okay. I believe. Um, and you know we we put fencing around them to keep the, the kids out and they tear it down and you know since we have our um, somers land trust folks down there and the persons of mike barnhart and bob mcgregor who do a great job um you know they continually bring this up you know what are we going to do about these these condos so i said all right let's let's see let's see what the what we're dealing with so the first thing we did, we went out and had um, an assessment done of what type of hazardous materials might be there, asbestos, you know, what have you, lead, and uh, we did get a report back on that, uh, which they did find it in some of the condos. Then, um, based on that, um, Jordian, who is this um, concern that we've been using, uh, 
best to describe this, um, Patty. You, maybe you, Jordian is a entity that has access to the state bid list, and instead of a local municipality taking a project and you know getting the specs all together and sending it out, getting bids back, we hire Jordian. They're pre, you know, they're only using people that off a state bid list. And uh, we've, we've used them on the Van Tassel house, right. saved our, us a lot of time and professional. Uh, they say that was a J, not a G. It's a G. Did it say Gordian or Jordian? Gordian. Oh, Gordian? I just want. Yeah. So they went up there, they um, looked at the uh, hazardous analysis and then came back to the town with a proposal mm. to demolish, mm. remove, mm. Get, get ready, Sit down clear the ground, mm. 840,000, mm. $886.70. Wow. So that gave me pause. Now these are the guys that go out and get contractor bids and summarize it. Summarize it and yes. Some, and get the best price that they can from all right. the bonds. And I think the, uh, yeah, the contractor was ELQ that came in with that bid. So at, it, did he, he have other contractors uh, on that or just one that came to Gordian? Well, Gordian- um, ELQ is on the state bid, so I pick it back. So does that so mean- So it, it takes the bid process out of it by using this company. Right. But does that mean it's the lowest? Yeah. For, for that type of work. So Gordian brings <laughs> us the lowest that can accomplish the task. Right. Okay. Okay. It's like, you know, highway buys a truck off the state bed. Yeah, right. Have to go it out. Right. right. Okay. Then we're okay. Okay. I wonder what the high was. <laughs> so, I, you know, um, five million. <laughs> one of the conversations I had, I won't say with, with whom, um, you know, do we go go out and hire them for eight hundred and forty thousand dollars, or do we put up a fence for five thousand? <laughs> you know, um, it's up for discussion. Are we the sole owners of that property? It's yes. not share. I know the butts angle fly. So well, well, it's part of angle fly. Yeah. Then it's, it's, then do we solely own it? We have thirteen acres. Those are the acres acres over. we control. Yeah, we we actually own. 15 acres solely for the town of Somers and uh and Westchester County um we jointly own uh some other parcels but they want to trade <laughs> we're already trying to trade so yeah, so, nice so, for you people. yeah so one of the actions uh we're, we're thinking about taking is is contacting the county and say uh so um Roland, I know I asked you this a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, we finally surveyed, we cut out our 15 acres. Was that filed with with the deed? I mean, is, is that a f that part, that deed was finalized with the county. Okay. But what's still hanging out there is the easement exchange. Right. If you recall, right. Right. We, this board authorized it, the county finally authorized it and then it went up to DEC for the Are you signature. doing sure. that's the 11 acres. Yeah, that's, that's 11 between we we park, park, but yeah. that's still incomplete. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, I wrote a letter to the attorney general. Well, I said this is on your desk for, so, for how many years. You, no, no, it's no, but I mean it's been all the state. We've been talking about this as long as we all have been on the board. Right, in all fairness, it got to her desk probably this spring. But uh, yeah, we've been working with DEC and I'm the calling county Tish tomorrow to get it up there. Okay, but the but the uh, the deed with the county that was finally finalized. Okay, yeah, yeah. for the 15 acres. Yeah. So now whether or not they've recorded it or not, I don't know. But it went it went to the county attorney. So was that deed Somers solely owns it, or do we, or is the county a partner? I think I. I thought that the idea was that we, it was a deed from the county to us. Well, the only thing that I'm thinking a little differently is because 
that park is open to Westchester Everybody. County residents. Well, maybe it was from the county to both the county and the town. Maybe that's Something. what it was. So, well, if that if there's a little opening that we can approach the, the county with, I mean, we approached them for assistance with the generator yeah. at uh, Heritage. Waiting. I don't know that we got any Waiting. response to that. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it's at least worth the effort to, you know, say there's a there's a cleanup here that uh, the town mm -hmm. is considering. So, um, so we can't get this price to. It's one bid. What's that? It's no. one bid. I mean, and yeah. ultimately, what will happen because we've had big projects and this has happened is ultimately we would spend all the money and the time to bid it out. ELQ is going to bid it and be the lowest bidder. You know, that's what happened up on in Windsor there. They yeah. did the right, right. work. Okay. That's the company. That's the company. Yeah. yeah, that's the company that Jordan okay. went to. And they're the ones that came up with that uh, right. bid price. Can we get I mean, grant money and this sort of happen concurrently with this? Or? You know, um, oh, we will share this with our grant writer. That's certainly a uh, an avenue to take. It's an and environmental. It's yeah. an environmental so, component here, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If that's in the watershed, will there be money there to somehow protect water mm -hmm. with whatever is up there that they found is there? <laughs> so, you know, you were asking me for uh, you know suggestions. Um, you know, one of the things I mentioned was, you know, if we have a developer um, yeah. that yeah. needs something from the town, we do a community <laughs> benefits, and he. Yeah. demolish them and the, the other one suggestion i made was uh had the somers volunteer fire department do a yeah, controlled so, burn so, so so that. That. yeah, yeah i could, about that i quickly heard from our environmental folks uh right. that's going to pollute the uh the air so it was just a suggestion <laughs> i'm i'm, hey, I'm right. reaching i'm reaching for right. solutions just questions. it might be instructive though if you could get a copy of elq's response to jordian to see where the bulk of the money. No, it's in there. Yeah, yeah, we have to itemize. Is it in the disposal? Half and half. It's in the it's in the tear down and disposal. It's six hundred thousand of it. Yeah, I mean, and they're they're going to leave the site, you know, where you can grass it over, basically. Is, so, is there any uh, reusable? I mean, is I there scrap they, material? They've stuff? taken it all. You know, the copper has been taken out of there. Yeah. Well, that the has roofing but, and uh, everything else. You know, because I mean, that's some great terracotta roofing. Now, some might still be there, but well, a lot yeah, of the roofing has a lot to do with it. it it's protected right, the insides of of these. That's not to say there's not a mold issue, and but you know, we could. You know, th another thought was maybe. You know, two or three of these can be put together for uh, you know rehab as a nature preserve or, or something of that nature. You know, we, we had talked about that, but um, you know, Mike and uh, Michael and uh, Bob, you know, have a, a job chasing kids out of there. You know, oh my just, God! Yes, it's it's just for years. Not safe you know, for them. maybe a part solution to that if we we. We get that Reynolds house occupied eventually. You know that'll be part of the uh, the residents' responsibility. Would be to kind of safeguard that those uh, condos. So uh, that is to be continued. But I did want to share the uh, the bid with uh, you and 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 discuss it. So I'm going to refer this um, over to the grant writer. And we'll check with the county. All right. So uh, item number five. This is to authorize the supervisor to secure a will serve letter from the from Suez, New York, to connect the business historic <clears throat> district to Suez Water and Heritage Hills. So this is just a step in the overall uh, water district creation. <laughs> Um, Westchester County needs a resolution from us um, saying that we've secured uh, a will serve letter from Suez, New York, which Rowan, we have. You have that, right? It was attached to one of Steve's uh, communications. Yep. Yeah. You got a question from the audience? 
Yes. Author Singer 803A, Heritage Hills. Which agencies are responsible for determining that there will be sufficient water? That is the operator. That's a private concern. So it would be the operator, Suez, New York. Which is now oh, yeah. Viola. The French are involved. <laughs> yeah, I understand. That was just recently required. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. I'm sorry. You said it was. It's recently been acquired. Suez has been acquired right. by this French company. Yes. So I, so when I look at the plan, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Then when I look at the plan, it looks like quite an ex extension. Yeah. This is under Suez heading, and that's dated November 22nd. Okay. So other areas have been added to that. If I'm thinking about the, the four wells, there's a fifth, which is not working for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like a valid concern. And you want to tell me what? No, I was about the, the Suez. No, I mean, the the question, will there be? You're worried if there's enough capacity. Yeah. Right. Is there going to be uh, deep well drawdowns to see if there's enough water? So my, my understanding, and um, once again, this is my understanding, the Westchester County Department of Health, upon receipt of this will serve letter will engage you know, the new owner and Suez and do, do testings on capacity. I think they have to take their um, highest yielding well offline and then do a, a capacity test on the existing wells. But that would address, you know, like you said, there's five wells and one is either incapacitated or not being used. Um, but yeah, the health department, that's why they are involved agency in this, this so, project. This is, once again, um, at the very beginning stages of, of negotiations. You so, know, we, we did this when we expanded the, um, the water district to Somers Crossing, to Chico's, and, and the schools. So when this concept plan was put before us, I guess a few, you know, board meetings back, the engineers were in front of us. This is one of my concerns. I, you know, I asked them to say, I want them to tell us if there's enough capacity. Now he's going to go through all the details, engineering details that Rick is describing here. I'm not sure what that is, but he has to tell us there's enough capacity we don't to do the project. So when that's, you say he who he is, being the engineer, our engineer who's interpreting this for us. Okay. One of his actions is to make sure there's enough capacity here. Yeah. Now you're also asking what legislative agency or regulatory body oversees this. I mean, I would go to the engineering folks to do that, but I think Rick no, articulated. Yeah, that would be the Westchester County Department of Health. So they got to come back and they have to do exactly what I said, asked. You know, I would imagine Suez can come back and say, look, you know, here's the capacity. This is how I can add capacity, you know? Yeah, I think the Bring health department is going to they gotta validate they what, gotta they're, what, they're, what they're stating. You know, they do testing. But as far as our response to the county and what's going on in this area, this is a, this is the solution. And one of the other things I was concerned about, this doesn't commit us to anything. That was the first question I had tonight. Does this commit us to anything? No. What it does is it says, you know, I have a memo of, of understanding from uh, the supplier of water saying that he thinks he can handle it. Okay, while well, I'm here, if, if uh, I'm not that familiar with it, but there are issues in this area here where you need additional water. So the, the issue here is um, there is a contaminant, the uh, floral. PFOA, PFOA. Yeah, so it's POFA, POFS, 
AS, and it's in fire retardant clothing. It's, I mean, it's pervasive in our environment, firefighting foam. Um, and just last August, I guess it was, the state came out with a, um, an MCL um, level of 10, 10 parts per trillion of the POAF, A, and we got some hits here at the townhouse and at the annex. So we had a retest. I think some of our readings, uh, the once again, the, the action level is 10. We, we got 17 and 23 here, and I think 18 and something at the townhouse, at the uh, annex. So those get reported to the Department of Health. Department of Health put us on notice that we're in violation. Um, and what was what's what's our plan? So we had our town engineer engineer in here a couple of meetings ago, presented us with options. You know, one was um, carbon setting up a carbon filtration system, which was um, these cylind large cylinders uh, filled with carbon. Uh, they'd be housed in a building that was 12 by 16 feet. Um, Cost is probably $400,000. And then annual maintenance, you have to clear it out the tanks, is another six grand. So that, that was something to digest. The other, another option would be, you know, we have a water supply in proximity to the townhouse. We as a town board have allowed the extension of it to Somers Crossing, like I said, to Chico's in the school. Let's let's look into it for, for the historic district. So these are- Is it just the historic district? It looked kind of large to me on that fuzzy plan that I downloaded. Okay, so yeah, th at this point, it would run from you know, wherever the connection is, whether it's at the intersection of Chico's and Heritage, there's a main there, uh, would come up to 100 here, down 100 to 116. So it would be limited, not even to the entire uh, historic district, because we're not considering going down 100. And ultimately, well, why we're doing this is to solve this water quality issue. Um, we and that issue is just in this area here. It doesn't affect no. It's it's other hit areas. miss. It's hit and miss. Um, I think the willows have an issue with uh, PO, uh, POAS, but yeah. nothing has been well, on those wells up there. The wells to the north of us. Uh, we asked the engineer. Nothing was there, and as as Mr. Maroney pointed out, and so the engineer, it could be parcels literally next to each other and some have it and some not. So it's almost impossible, am I correct, Roland, your experience yep. to determine, okay, it's this area. Uh, even I think you're saying out on Long Island by an airport that there are some at the airport and then right next oh, door. Right here, Westchester. Airport. Westchester Airport, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's a very strange thing. Uh, you know, the, the only way I know I think about this or I, when it came up, the, the film Dark Waters is about the Scott Academy Award, which will scare the bejesus out of you. Uh, but that's, it's about this stuff, people. <laughs> so here's the nuance. The, regula the, the regulator came out with this about 18, 24 months ago. It turns everything upside down because now you have violations all over and you have to come up with plans. So everybody's scrambling. The regulation sets standards for only water companies and large I don't know how to describe it, you know, large systems, not private people. So when you say all right. over here, we don't know. But the testing has been mandated for the, the larger systems. Your system has been tested, doesn't have it. Why? I, I don't know. I've been told the wells are very deep or whatever. You know, the willows, they have it. So that they're, they're that water company is putting in a remediation. I think they're doing the wells remediation yeah. system. And okay. So you know the push and pull here is how do you address it? Do you try to address it with something, you know, remote with a remote filtration system, 
which is very, very expensive, or do you try to do something that's more permanent, like a sewer system, and try to capture a bigger, you know, a bigger spot? And, you know, we have the townhouse. We also have all the, the restaurants here. Um, they would be very, they, they would love to get, you know, some sort of an interconnect like this. And uh, we're going to also ask some of the, you know, the town, I guess, goes we're, into some of the residential yeah, we're in the, areas. We're in the, uh, what we're doing is surveying the historic district businesses and uh, residents for their interest. You know, if no one wants to connect to the a water supply, then maybe it's, it's not more. economically feasible. Well, how are the restaurants dealing with it? Presently, they're they either buying that water or they're not you know, using that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know. I know uh, the one restaurant here has two wells, um, so you know they may have just switched wells. But you know, I, I that's a private concern. I, I don't know how they're right. okay necessarily dealing with. But an answer to your first question: Will there be enough water for you? Um, <laughs> That's what the engineers and the Department of Health have. That, that's their well, job to make sure that you can still take a shower. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to authorize the supervisor. Um, to, now we, I know we've already secured it. So what, what? How should we word that resolution? Just to acknowledge receipt. Okay, make, uh, make a motion to authorize the supervisors to accept the will serve letter from Suez, New York to connect the business historic district to um, Suez Water and Heritage Hills. Which letter is dated November 22nd? Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Parks and Recreation, look at this, we have uh, items. So number one, request permission to execute the concession stand extension agreement with uh, O'Neill's concessions with a 2% increase in the 2022 over 2021 per memo dated November 24th, 2021 from Steve Ralston, Superintendent of Recreation. We put that on the consensus? Yeah, consensus. Yeah, it's consensus. Number two, request permission to execute the Cable Park Caretaker License Agreement. This is the, the lease uh, with Howard Vinberg and a monthly rate rent of $1,405 commencing January 1, 2022 and terminating on December 31st, 2023 per memo dated November 24th from Steve Ralston, um, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. I think we're going to move this one. Um, no, 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 we, we don't, don't have to. It doesn't start until January. Yeah, it doesn't start until the um, end Just of out this. of curiosity, is that an increase or a decrease over the previous two <clears throat> years? Presumably an increase. But yeah, it's an increase. It's an increase. Nominal? Nominal. Or barely nominal. Right. Uh, and then number three, request permission to sell old, remove doors, French doors, I've been in, um, informed by our town clerk that- We're gonna take that off. Um, we'll put it back on with some edits next week. Okay, yeah. so we're gonna remove- There you go. Yeah, because they are town owned items. I mean, the discussion was, do we throw them away or try to sell them? And we had somebody that was interested in purchasing them, but apparently you cannot do that. So mm -hmm. not just off the bat like that. Right. It's like a bid you'd have to put out or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Can Lewisboro run into a problem like that with a piece of land? Huh. You can throw a gesture. Yeah, I don't care. Can I speak to that just one second? Yeah. I'll be brief. Um, Megan from the Historical Society. In the future, um, this actually was something that I had tried to spearhead. But is there a way that those monies, we can recycle things like that? Because some of these doors and windows and other properties and architectural salvage does 
command a fair amount of money and it's a way that the town could get additional revenue. So um, well, that's that's sort of what you're talking about. That's, doing, what, right? that's so what we're I'm talking gonna, about. Yeah. Yeah. I so mean, I, we haven't done that in the past. Um, don't, don't say that. <laughs> See you. Bye. Um, OK, so we're going to remove it. Uh, Pat, Patty, you will uh, will revisit. We're just going to edit it next week. OK. All right. That sounds good. OK, under personnel, uh, we have current vacancies and a number of our boards. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. You know, this town is run by its volunteers. I'm pretty sure you're close. Uh, we do have, you know, two candidates that. Yeah, one uh, more time to do it too. Yeah, uh, and I'll get it in. <laughs> so you can bet. Uh, so uh, we we do have two candidates, and we're going to be doing interviews uh, after the first, so the uh, Luke Town Board and Supervisor can have input on who's serving on those boards. And authorize the payout. Now, this is an interesting one. Authorize the payout of 30 days out of 84 accrued vacation days for Steve Ralston, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation, which equates to $12,431.88 per memo from Steve Ralston, the request, and email from Supervisor Morrissey, uh, dated November 29th. Now, um, I think we will all agree Steve does a great job at the um, parks. Uh, so good that I can't make him take a vacation. For the, for the eight years I've been here, um, he just works. So um, it's getting to the point where, you know, I instructed uh, all of the staff to spend down their, um, their time. And, uh, you know, he, he did. He made a yeoman's effort, but with um, dwindling staff at the uh, at the uh, parks and rec during COVID, um, you know he he was up to eighty four accrued days. So this was a way we can cut down on his accruals. He can work on in twenty twenty two to get that that number down, but also pay him pay him out for those vacation days. Out of curiosity, we pay him on a daily rate for that, right? Yeah, is it, and that rate is determined at his current salary, not the if he's accumulated these for a while, not that salary, not that daily rate from whatever number of years ago. No, right? no, that would. <laughs> I wouldn't even ask our finance director to take that on because that is a proposal up in Albany. Oh my God! You know, really, that, uh, people who work for the state that they're paid at that. So you save something from thirty years ago. So at my job, I left with over 400 days mm -hmm. and that you'd be paid you sure another work at, the, at the rate. Uh, well, my wife didn't let me stay home. <laughs> I think that was really. Oh, that explains. Yeah. It. Well, you know, we got the whole thing, but uh, you, you get paid at that rate. It's a way that that the state has talked about saving money by paying you at the rate of when you save the day, not now. So I just want to. I'm not, I'm not saying it's fair or unfair. Or not, I just want to. Right, so I'm going to make a motion um, and move this so that we can get him paid by the end of the year. Was there a rationale between the number 30? No. Nah. Why 30 out of 84? Why not all 84? That was the request. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was agreed upon. Uh, so I'll make a motion to authorize the payout. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay, uh, proposed consensus. Hold on, give me a second to read this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have another week to read it. I'm all good. Okay. Um, our next meeting is December 9th. Just note uh, the time change, please. What? Note the time yeah. change. There's a typo oh, on the end. Yeah, yeah, there is. A right, so the board voted on a time change for 6 p.m. Uh, to start the town board meeting. Uh, this is also the meeting where we'll have our public hearing on our preliminary budget. And at the close of that hearing, uh, if there's no major adjustments, we will adopt our 2022 budget. Patty, did the notice in the newspaper reflect yes. the time change? That was why we had to do it. Because we know it's one in the following day. Yep. Okay, great. 
Okay, and that concludes our business of uh, this evening, December 2nd, 2021. I'll just say something quick, um, just on the public comment. Uh, you know, I think uh, Jennifer and Barbara, I guess, they did their public comment. I think they were probably expecting some sort of response or whatever. From, from my point of view, I'm just thinking that they should, you know, put together maybe a master plan you know, re up and kind of relook at, uh, you, know, the, you know, those larger needs that they, they see over the next five years and then we figure out how, you know, how they should be funded. Yeah. I, they, they should also reach out and instead of coming to public comment, I, have it put as an agenda item. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, 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 and I think, and, and, that and, too. yeah. So I, I mean, just, I think constructively, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. So, but Ms. Daddio has stated right from the start that she's very constructive. She's looking for yeah, you know, different ways of doing things. I, I just object. Right. So that. our building department has well, responsibility for many of these items that she brought up. Um, you know, as far as meeting space uh, and the, and those issues, um, you know, we're not going to vet them out here. I understand no, that. Uh, you know, we we would need exactly. an engagement with with exactly. them. Um, but I did also did want to clarify, you know, she, uh, Barbara was talking about the library. If they get a generator, they can become a shelter. Um, it was kind of, I, I, yeah. this was public comment. I didn't want to interchange with her, but I'm glad you, you brought this up. The town has a, an emergency operation plan and we have a designated shelter, which is Heritage Hills Activity Center. We have a backup Back shelter up. at Somers Middle School. Sure. We have an, an additional backup at Lincoln Hall. Um, you know, so could we take care of 10,000 people? Um, I'm not sure, but certainly I think uh, if a tornado comes through or what she was talking about, um, we are prepared. Yeah. We are prepared. We're not a catastrophe that affects ten thousand people. We are, for something like exactly. that, we're going to be we... calling in a lot of other troops, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, uh, but you know, once again, we appreciate the, the comment. Um, but I will direct uh, Jennifer to put put all these thoughts together and get them over to Tommy Tuma, who's got responsibility for uh, building maintenance. Cool. Any announcements? Oh, there's just a couple. <clears throat> the Town of Somers holiday celebration is going to be this Sunday, December 5th, here at the townhouse. It starts at 3 p.m. with the, the Knights of Columbus lighting the nativity scene dedicate, or it's a nativity scene dedication. From 3.30 to 5, there's photos with Santa, Somers Chamber of Commerce, holiday sing-along. The tree lighting will be at five. The town tree tradition, your photo in front of the tree with a six feet ruler will be still going on this year. The United States Marine Corps annual Toys for Touch Drive. Um, there's, they're looking for uh, unwrapped toys. There's a box located here in the Elephant Hotel right in our lobby. So you can access that from nine to 4.30. Uh, Monday through Friday, excluding holidays. The last day to drop off a toy for a river child is December 13th, 2021. The Somer, our favorite event, the Somers Volunteer Fire Department Annual Candy Cane Run will be Saturday, December 18th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Santa will be uh, on the back of the fire truck Check the flyer under events on the town website. Oh, no, I'm sorry. On the Town of Somers Volunteer Fire Department website, which is www.somers. S-V-D-F. S-F-D. No, at Somers. V-F-D. Dot com. It's also, that flyer is also up on the town's website. It's on the town. All these announcements are on the town's website. And you, know, you can look up to find out when Santa on the fire truck will be coming through your neighborhood. So you can be out there to get your candy cane. Yeah. Is Santa going to be in here Sunday or at outside? No, outside. I'll outside. be outside. I'm not finishing my announcement. Oh, pardon me. Are you doing anything this weekend? There he goes again. 
On this day in 1978, Neil Diamond and Barbara Streisand's You Don't Bring Me Flowers hit number one. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's Rich, isn't that your wife's favorite song? <laughs> Chance. How would you know? I think it's uh, very cool. Ooh, it's I, a road I, jerk. I, I got, Let's I, keep it up here, folks. I've got real entertainment tonight. Right. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, here you go. Home right. sweet dome. There's the Summer Suns football team leaving on their way to Syracuse. And of course, that's my favorite coach uh, narrating there. <laughs> but uh, that was uh, my favorite coach's clip from today on their way to get on those buses. So good luck, boys. Tomorrow, wow. three o'clock. So oh, exciting. That's so right. exciting. Bring, bring another title back to title town. So exciting. Exciting. If I have to, I'm going to it. So I'm looking forward to it. It should be fun. It would have to be going the first up. town in New York State twice has won soccer and football in the same years. It's not the whole, you know, doesn't say everything about a town, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, but, yeah, but you know what? Two Rich, in one year. I think you only want to do it once. Thing, though, having games at noontime and three o'clock on a Friday. Mm -hmm. You know, because wow. I told I saw a lot of parents who want to go up. They're like, you know, I got to work. Yeah, and you know, I have an office up there, so they, I'm going up to the office and and then going to the game. Basketball, they start at ten o'clock on Friday morning, yeah, but, but they go basketball. all weekend. Who cares? <laughs> 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 okay, new tickets. Well, well Rick, as you know, the um, there's a, an internet way to view this as well, and it's nfhsnetwork.com, and anybody Stream can view the it on their computer or their phone. And the well, restaurants. And why don't you mention some of the restaurants that are going to be? Streaming. Well, we talked to them all, and uh, a few of them having view parties are oh. Il Forno, Barnwood, um, and uh, La Fontaine are also interested in signing up for it. So those are just some of the places cool. all have been notified. And but if you're going to use that streaming app, you do have to pay the $10.99. Yeah. Oh, it's $10.99 now? Right. Mm -hmm. it's been, well, you get it's for, for the month. month. But you can save that if you go to one of these restaurants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go there. Well, yeah, if you, you should have downloaded it. You should have you should have done it for the first three case. weeks ago you and you would have had the whole month. Would which $2, I, $2 a game. <laughs> Which which I did, and I have it, but I I make what to a restaurant. This is too big to sit at home and yeah. scream. They apparently they have uh, four buses of kids five. going five now. They're up to five. It's gonna be a lot of kids up there. Wow. Mm -hmm. it's, so, it's, a, it's a day off for 25 bucks. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> they get to leave after. Uh, they get to leave after Why are you going period. to Syracuse? Not yeah. sure, but that's it. nice. They're, they're yeah. going to get up there and go, there's a football game going on. Yeah. 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 Check the weather. Now, we wish them uh, the best of luck. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, Anthony DiMatteo's first year as a coach. I know. Oh, to the state. Right? I mean, this is dream. Things those dreams are made of. Dreams are made of. Team wish you Brothers would. Academy. Uh, yeah, they're eight, good. Eight, I think they're eight and three. We're twelve and zero. Mm -hmm. They're so Ooh, really good. I hope that's an indication of something. But that, this is almost like a home game from there because I think they're, they're right there. Yes, yeah. uh, right there. Yeah. Well, that's why we that's went up a day ahead of time sports. to get uh, all rested. We're not jumping off a bus and they had a good okay. practice jumping on the field. Evening. Yeah, got yeah. five buses in their hotel. Doing well. Very cool. Yeah, Very cool. To it. Hopefully, they can sleep. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other issues? Concerns? On this day in 1804, Napoleon Whoa. crowned himself emperor of France. Wow. Himself. Yes, he did. You almost got no fun facts today. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. Okay. Well, obviously, uh, we wish the uh, Tuskers uh, best of luck tomorrow at your uh, three o'clock game under the uh, Carrier Dome. And uh, if there are no other comments, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Good night, Somers.